Hi, Warren Sprouse, you're on the Bible Forum. Did you see the most LGBTQ inclusive inaugural prayer service recently? ChristianHeadlines.com commented on it. I would have expanded it. The nation's largest LGBT advocacy group is calling Thursday's presidential inaugural prayer service the most LGBTQ inclusive inaugural prayer service in history for its inclusion of two transgender faith leaders and three other trailblazing LGBTQ faith leaders. Don't you love the term faith leaders? What does that mean? My dog has faith. She trusts me. I pretty much lead her. Am I a faith leader? The service was hosted by the National Cathedral in Washington, D.C. It's an Episcopal church. There was a time when a good Catholic would not have done that. Catholics were not permitted to even so much as step inside a Protestant church, at least not where they have services. They couldn't do that on a Thursday, let alone go in and worship with people there. Episcopalians are Protestant. And yet the word Catholic means universal. Are you confused yet? To worship in a Protestant church used to be a sin. I said, come on. I'm old. My friend, Johnny Craven, and I were walking uptown in our community one day. In about 1959 or 60, I can't remember which, I don't think we were out of school yet. We graduated in 61. And as we walked uptown, we passed my church. The church I went to it was a brand new Methodist church, big church. I crossed over the street, I went in. Doors were always unlocked for churches. But Johnny didn't want to come in. I had to encourage him. And he did. But he wouldn't go past the foyer. He said as a Catholic, he meant Roman Catholic, it was a sin for him to go into that church's worship area. Roman Catholic President Joe Biden watched from the White House. But he would have gone in. He has gone in. He did when he was vice president. And Catholics everywhere are doing it. But there was a time when it was anathema. What changed? Protestantism hasn't changed. President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris watched the service remotely from the White House. Patti LaBelle and Josh Groban sang. Well-known faith leaders, including Episcopal Bishop Michael Curry, spoke. Don't you love this new terminology? They're now faith leaders. They're not pastors. They're not priests. They're faith leaders. What's that mean? A pastor means shepherd. A priest is a person who stands between you and God, officiating on your behalf. What's a faith leader? Well, today it's anybody who sings, or speaks religious words in church, leading you in faith. I don't know. The Human Rights Campaign applauded the service for placing two transgender faith leaders on the program, Paula Stone Williams, who is now the pastor, we used to call him Pastor X, of the Left Hand Church in Longmont, California, and Barbara Satin, not to be confused with Satan, S-A-T-I-N, Faith Work Director for the National LGBTQ Task Force in Minneapolis, HRC called it an historic move. Hillary Rodham Clinton. Did you know the Bible specifies men as faith leaders, not women? Specifically. Oh, and it calls them pastors, shepherds, evangelists, teachers. Never does it call them a faith worker or a faith leader. 
Williams read from Isaiah 58, verses 6 through 12. I'd like to read that for you. The prophet says, Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that ye break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou shalt thou, that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked, that you cover him, that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And if thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fail not. And they that, that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places, and thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. What in the world does that mean? Well, I know what it means in context, Old Testament history. What's it mean to us today? And the answer is very little. It was a divine word from God through the prophet Isaiah to God's chosen people, Jews, a people relating to their God by means of rules and regulations. Judaism was and is a do this and God promises to do that relationship. It's had nothing to do with non-Jews. It has nothing to do with Christians except as an example and certainly nothing to do with the government. But didn't it sound nice? Well, that's why he chose it. Not because it would be spiritual up uplifting spiritually. Not because it would teach us something. Not because it would apply to anything that's going on. But that it would feed the liberal line that it would reinforce their pension for teasing poor people with food and money. Oh, and, and bringing them more votes. I know. You think that's cynicism, don't you? Satan said a brief prayer for the men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. The HRC called it the most LGBTQ inclusive inaugural prayer service in history. The same organization applauded the program for including three other trailblazing LGBTQ faith leaders. Fred Davey, Executive Vice President of Union Theological Seminary in New York. Yvette Flunder, pres Presiding Bishop of the Fellowship of Affirming Ministries in Oakland, California and Sharon Kleinbaum, Senior Rabbi of the Congregation Beit Simchat Torah in New York. Alfonso David, President of the Human Rights Campaign, said in a statement that Biden's commitment to inclusion and mirroring the true image of America in the new administration shines through powerfully in this historic LGBTQ inclusive prayer service. He continued, this service reflects a critical change in tone away from the cynical use of religion and faith as weapons of division against the LGBTQ community and instead toward tools of service in the work of justice and inclusion. Elevating the voices of LGBTQ faith leaders sends a strong message to the LGBTQ community that we are an integral part of faith communities, that our continued advocacy for equity is crucial in the work of healing the soul of America. Oh, that's emotional. But so much for biblical Judaism. 
Afro-biblical Christianity, too, for that matter. It's now all about faith leaders, faith communities. And there are no barricades. There's no limitations. Only there's not one ounce of faith anywhere to be seen. It's about homosexuality. It's about selfism. It's about the women's lib movement. You did hear the names of these organizations, didn't you? Union Theological Seminary? That's been an ultra-liberal seminary as long as I've been on the planet. How about the Fellowship for Affirming Ministries? No mention of God, no mention of Jesus, no mention of sin, salvation, the gospel, the Bible. Affirming Ministries. And Beit Simchat, Torah. What's that? It means the house of rejoicing in the law. How'd they get in here? I don't know. Unless they ignore the very words that describe and define their belief system. They're LGBTQ people. God created the first human beings as male and female. Male and female created he them. It's in their Bible, Jewish Bible, Christian Bible. Three times God specified humanity in terms of male and female. A creation, later referring to that event in chapter Genesis 5, verse 2, and at the ark. Genesis 6, 19, every living thing of all flesh they shall be, male and female. Why? To replenish the stock. Two men can't do that. Two women can't do that. Not without a lot of help. Jesus came along 4,000 years later. Matthew 19, verse 4, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning, talking about God, made them male and female? And again, it's recorded in Mark chapter 10, verse 6, same words. Why is this so hard to understand? Are these people not reproducing? And if they are, how do they do that? Do they bear kittens at birth? Or maybe half humans? Or maybe half girls and half boys. They come out kind of a, a mixture. And the biggest question of all, do they have a verse for this? Any of it? Just ask me.